Learning a programming language can be complicated and tedious, especially when the material isn't explained very well. But with this technique I'm about to share with you in this video, the whole process will be easier, faster, and will put you well on your way to becoming a pro. So before we talk about Anki, I think it's a good idea to talk briefly about spaced repetition. So imagine you've got a set of flashcards lying in front of you. I'd say you're learning in Python in this case. You won't study them in the same order every single day, because eventually the ones in front will get so easy that you'll want to get rid of them, only to then need them again when you eventually forget. This is why, instead, you'll send them towards the back, so that when you might begin to forget, you'll refresh your memory, and the more flashcards you have, the further back said flashcard will go. It's said that the longer you can go without reviewing a topic, the more you'll remember it in long term, or in my experience, the less time it takes to pick back up when starting a new project later. Anki is a free piece of software that's available on all platforms, including your phone. It uses spaced repetition in order to allow you to train yourself to remember anything you'd like to learn without relying on physical flashcards. You have a digital collection of decks you can add and customise to your art content. There are enough plugins out there in order to make any kind of flashcard you desire. The majority of people I've seen using Anki are people in medical school, so a useful plugin for those students, for example, would be Image Occlusion, which would allow them to cover up labels in anatomy textbooks. A plugin I like to use is called Syntax Highlighting for Code. This works for a wide array of programming and markup languages, but it also formats your code like a regular IDE. The default setup for creating flashcards in Nanki is that you'll type in your question on the top section, which is aptly named front, with your answer on the back being back. So far, it doesn't offer much difference than the physical set of flashcards. When you review each flashcard, you're given three options to choose from, depending on how difficult it was to remember the answer. Most of the time, I'll just choose again if I can't remember, or good, as the other answers can dramatically reorder the card. But when you're really struggling, selecting hard will shove it in your face more often. So it's not exactly the same as just shuffling your flashcards to the back of your deck, but instead you've got an algorithm that's fine-tuned and even customizable. You can actually add more fields than just front and back. Now of course those are the two most important ones because of the way Anki treats them, but if you wanted to add more information, they make it easy to, to organize into your study. For instance, if you were learning a new language, you could have an additional field for context, like how you'd use this new word as part of a sentence. Or in our case, we could use the name of the programming language we're reviewing, or the module we're using in Python. Often when it comes to programming, it's not actually necessary to memorise literally everything, because of how often things will change. That's why learning the smaller details that add up to the whole is equally, if not more, important. Another way to use additional information in your flashcard is called closed deletion. Do you remember those workbooks in school where you had to fill in the missing gap in a sentence? Well, in Anki, this is called a close, and it doesn't require more than one field. What you'll do is mark each word you'd like to hide, and you can either reveal them all in one go, or show which order you see them first. If you were to use this for programming purposes, you can use this alongside the syntax highlighting plugin I mentioned earlier. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to remember not to make your blocks of code too long and make for a convoluted flashcard. Perhaps limit it to one or two functions. The reason being that not only does Anki lack the native feature of having a scroll bar within a flashcard, but there are so many ways something can be programmed, or a feature may be introduced to shorten the workload. Back in university, I had a programming exam which I had to use jQuery to rotate the colour of a page's background, and I somehow managed to learn the entire function definition of my heart before the date of the exam. Outside of doing tomorrow's exam, don't try and do something like this, because you'll begin thinking that programming is way harder than it actually is. So brief tangent aside, another technique you can use with programming is actually typing your answers and having Anki compare the differences. When you use this technique, Anki uses red and green highlights to show you how close you are to the answer. It may sound counterintuitive to suggest that developing your muscle memory can improve your programming, but there's a surprising amount of experience you can develop simply by typing in the code you see on screen. You'll become much more familiar with your keyboard, you'll make less errors, and overall you'll type code much faster and become more efficient at problem solving. 
So why don't I go ahead and show you how we can go about installing Anki and making use of those awesome features. Well, the first part is obvious. If we go to the good old Google, the first result will take us to the official website in which we can download and install the latest version. Installing it shouldn't be a challenge, and I'm not about to go uninstalling it just so I can show you the installation process. To get the plugin I mentioned, we can just search for Anki plugins and the first result will take us to what is essentially the directory. When you're here, you can take a quick look at what's on offer. Stuff like Awesome TTS, which offers support for text-to-speech, or Review Heat Map, which gives people a visual cue on how many days in a row they've been studying their flashcard. But what we'll be looking for is the Santax highlighting for code. If you type into Santax on the search box to the right here, you'll find it here towards the top. If you want to read through, it'll give you some extra information on how to use it and the user comments at the bottom. But what we're interested in right now is this code here. Once you've copied and pasted the code, you can come to Tools, Add-ons, and finally, Get Add-ons. There's also a button here to get the plugin directory, but as I was writing this script, I forgot that was there. But if you look for a plugin called Multiline Type Answer Box, this will be useful for later on as well. Now I can go ahead and create a deck for testing purposes and have a look at what happens if I create a simple function definition with Python. We'll have a drop down menu here where we can select what we're using. I'll select Python. We just write our code here, making sure to mark any indents with four spaces, and then press this little lightning icon here. Perfect, and we can do that on either card. If we want to try using a close as well, we can change the type here from basic to close, and then hit Control shift c to wrap it in close. There's also an icon for it up there. Now the reason there are two icons is that sometimes you might want to hide two keywords at the top. That's what this C1 is here. If it was C2 or C3, they would hide on separate flashcards. And I'll give you a brief demonstration here. We'll click Add this to the deck and click Study Now. Now we can see that return has been replaced with this. We can click show answer and it will appear. Okay, so now I'll go into typed answers within Anki. This is a native feature, so we don't need to install any external plugins, but we can extend it with another plugin, which I'll go into later. This being the multi-line answer box thing. It is a little more hands-on, but it's not that bad once you've done it a couple times. So if we head back into our new deck and click the add button here, First, we'll make sure the type is basic, as we're not doing a close anymore. If we go into fields up here, we can just see that we have the front and back, which is what we see here. We can click add, just say yes to any warnings that pop up. They're just in case you're used to packing up your flashcards. We can call it additional info, and it won't automatically appear. I'll show you in just a second, but just for this example, I'll use this new field to detail what programming language we're talking about. Now if we go to cards, which is up here next to fields, we'll see what is basically like the code to our flashcards. Because this part is HTML, we can enter a new line and create an empty set of paragraph tags. And then inside this, we can type in additional info surrounded by two sets of curly braces. And remember, this doesn't just have to be the programming language, they can be general hints and so on. Now if we go to the back side of the card, we'll see where the answer normally appears. Let's cut its line out and place it at the bottom of our front card and add type semicolon so it now looks like this. Strictly speaking, we didn't need to create these paragraph tags. However, what we can do now is if you wanted to format this with CSS, we can go into styling, which is right here, and edit the paragraph tags how you normally would. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could change this font to size 0.8 em. We can just keep clicking OK to all that, and we're done. Now when we study our deck, we'll be prompted to type the answer. When we click Show Answer, we'll be given this comparison showing how close we were. I did mention previously that we can extend this functionality with another plugin, and this is with the Multiline Answer Box plugin. The formatting is a little different, and you need to add another block of CSS, but with the guidance I've given you already, you shouldn't find it to be a problem. Before I finish off the video, I think it's relevant to keep in mind that a lot of people will have different approaches to how they code. When you're learning any programming language, it will be common to see people use object-oriented programming. This is where they'll be more focused on using classes and objects to keep your code organised. I don't really use it personally, but it can be a bit overwhelming to see more advanced programmers use it for everything. 
If that happens, then I would just take a step back and try and study the smaller details, even using ChatGPT if you have to. Don't rely too heavily on ChatGPT though, as it can make stuff up and overcomplicate things. As for now though, that's all I've got. I hope these tips and techniques have given you enough information to begin or reinvigorate your learning journey. If you liked what I had to say in this video, or you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to share them down below. If you're watching this in early 2024, then I hope you're having a fantastic new year so far, and I hope you're managing to stick to those new year's resolutions. And bye for now.